There we go. We are on. Um, are there people watching on Ustream who, uh, who are out there with me? Please let me know how the um, let me know how the the video is coming and how the sound quality is coming to you, please. Are there people on Ustream who are on the telephone line? Let me know about it, please. Each of you, I welcome you to uh, the Chapel of Signs and Wonders with uh, the person moderating, your host, the Mighty City Kai Mary. Here is a global classroom uh, that God, the Holy Ghost, wants to use to solve common practical problems. I was chosen and called in 2012 by the Almighty God. And he said to me, go and teach my people how to be happy again. That is the greatest thing that the one biggest thing I have been called to do in life. And so it's not a small task for some people serving God, worshiping God, being with God is common for me. Is one of the most difficult job on the earth. It's one of the most wonderful job on the earth. It's one of also the most wonderful experience that you can think of. It's also one of the most rewarding, depending on how you look at it. Um, I will be consulting some of you to ask for ideas about certain things that um, that God has asked me to do, I need to begin to get um, to interact with some of you that I I find to be um, spiritually strong, very enthusiastic about the things of God, um, mentally very balanced in the way you look at life and the things of God. So I'll be consulting some of you to to get some some answers to how um, the ministry will go both now and in the future. This is not something that is uh, between me and God alone. I have asked God to plant people in in um, logistic positions for me, and uh, He is doing exactly that. People of God, um, if you've not taken time, take some time to look at the video. Pray before you start your day. That someone someone has gone there to make two additional videos of it without my knowledge and put it in the internet. Well, it's a good way of promoting what we are doing. But whenever you want to look at our videos, make sure you look at the one that says that has... Um, uh, if it is pray before you start your day, look at the one that says official video. Pray before you start your day. Official video. Idikai Mary, that's the real one. The other two, somebody else, make them up. Cut, cut, cut something there and just put, but it's, it's me. Uh, they just want to have something for themselves. Some people are going to the internet and picking up my video and... Uh, cutting it up and uh, uh, just from where they want to use for their own personal spiritual use. So I don't stop them from doing that. I was looking at that video tonight, the one that says the official video, pray before you start your day, official video by the Kate Mary, 107,000 people have watched it so far. 107,000 people. So, it was, yeah, it was just down June last year. So, so just think about uh, if if you guys can go into the internet and 
email that particular one, the one that says official video. Pray before you start your the official video by the time you mail them to your friend, put them on some of the website that you belong to and let people make use of them. One thing that I have not done, I'm, I'm not advertising the videos, neither am I promoting them. But somewhere along the line this year will stop and I will start from video number one that I ever made in 2012. We'll start promoting it. We'll start promoting it and we'll go from there. Okay. Um dear Holy Spirit, this is this is your thing. We ask you to lead, we ask you to guide, we ask you to direct. In Jesus' mighty name, lead this meeting your way. Amen. Now tonight, tonight we are we are looking at pains, the pains and trauma of middle life crisis. The pain and trauma of middle life crisis. Remember how this week, the method for this week is you can either call into the conference and um, share your story or share your experience or pray for somebody who is in need of prayer because of the sad experiences that they've gone through in life. So this is a place where we give you a shoulder to cry, where we give you a hug, where we let you know that you are loved and cared for. Um, um, so let's begin. Um, it is also a place where you are free to ask a question. I will never disgrace you in public. I'm not, I'm not that kind of a person. It's not my job. You can ask any question. The question can be as relevant as whatever, but it will be answered. So the topic we are dealing with tonight says the pain, pains and trauma of a middle life crisis. Yesterday we, we shared what a middle life crisis is about what it is, what age, and what are the things that, that, uh, that is a crisis uh, uh, to somebody that can uh, lead to a middle life crisis. There is something that we failed to add to what we did yesterday. And um, I, have, um, I have provided uh, a second video to what we did yesterday and it's going to be in the internet, uh, I think sometime by tomorrow or so. Uh, so that's where we are. So the question tonight is, um, remember too that if you have friends and loved ones that you need to invite to this conference, please do invite them to come and join. And um, if your phone is giving any kind of trouble, then mute it. Uh, if you want to talk, then unmute it and talk, ask your question, pray, or give your experience or your story. And um, the pain, what are the pains and trauma that a particular crisis you went through? What kind of pain did it cause you? Let's begin. If you have ever gone through a serious pain and trauma of a middle life crisis, what pain and trauma did it cause you? Let's begin. Anybody can jump in, tell your story of what it was. Don't mention anybody's name. Just, just let just know. What was the crisis? Hey. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Wow. Isn't that something? That is something. I, I pray that... Um, is, there, is there someone out there who want to call in to the conference or who is already in the conference who want to offer a few seconds of prayer for this wonderful, wonderful lady of God? Let's do it very quickly. again her sister thank you very much for that powerful story that you shared with us for some of you out there you might think oh it's ordinary the daughter simply left home to find her place in the world and to begin her journey in life it's not as simple as you think these are deep deep things these are deep deep things that she's talking about i'm serious Okay, who has another story to share with us of what what happened? What is the crisis, a middle life crisis that you've experienced that caused you so much pain and trauma? I mean, it took it took some time to be cured or to be treated, or even now it has not been able to be uh, to be cured, and uh, you need a solution. So, can you share that story with us? Thank you. Thank you. 
This is heavy for me. This is very, very heavy. Is there anybody who wants to bring a word of comfort and advice? Because tomorrow night is when we will be, um, tomorrow night is going to be heavy. Please, if you know of anybody who has gone through a middle life crisis, you have to tell them to be at the meeting tomorrow night. Because I'm going to be sharing with the world something that nobody I have not seen any book, I have not seen any video, I have not seen any prophecy given by God to any human being in the face of the earth concerning how to solve a middle life crisis like what he, maybe he has, I have not yet stumbled on, on it, I mean with anybody, but what he told me was so powerful that it shook me because I myself was crying for certain things that has happened in my life in the middle age of my life. I can tell you guys that the middle age of my life started even long before I was um, 35 and things that I experienced so tore me apart from different from different areas, including church, including marriage, including having kids, including family, including death in the family. It tore me to pieces. So God has a way of looking at things different from the way we look at it. Um, you, you won't believe one of the things I did today. Staying on the phone to plead with somebody not to commit suicide. 
I'm serious. Pleading, giving the person the reason why they have to know that life has its positive and happy side. If anybody told me in 2012 that what God told me that early morning when I was worshiping and dancing for him and he said, you are here enjoying your life, dancing before me, worshiping me, go and teach my people how to be happy again. I took it very lightly until recently when he come back and he said, remember what I told you? I said, yes, sir. He said, this is time for you to begin slowly to go that route. I'm serious. <sighs> After trying to make the person to see sense why she should stay alive, she turned the phone off. She clicked her phone off from me. She didn't want to listen again to what I was saying. Then I tried to call back and the person said, well, I don't want to listen to you. I'm so bitter. I don't want to listen to anybody. Then the Holy Spirit told me, because I was I was out on a walk, and the Holy Spirit said, call her. And I called her, and it's exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. She is trying to let go of life. I'm serious. She was asking me those kind of things. What is God thinking about her coming home? I said, no, I can allow you to go home now. It's not fair. Because of this, because of this, because of this. I, I don't think that is smart. She didn't want to listen to that. But when she turned her phone off me, I called her again and pleaded with her the second time. And then she turned her phone off again. Then the Holy Spirit said, don't bother. By the time that you finish your work, as I was out taking a walk, around the neighborhood that by the time that I'll come that she will leave me an email apologizing and telling me that she loves me and that she's really sorry. Immediately I walk into the studio here. I, I turned my iPad on and there was her email exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. She said, I'm very sorry for my behavior. I love and I care a lot about you. I'm very sorry. Forgive me. Amen. See, that's how this thing goes. And then the Holy Spirit said, don't call her. Give her some time. Let her cool off. It's going to be all right. And you know what is surprising? And then I went, I went out a few minutes before coming on the air. I went out to the mailbox. And this is somebody who want to take her life. And here is a letter from her to me. Isn't that strange? Here is a letter from her to me. And in it is a sum of money that she's giving to me and said, in case you need to get this, to get this, here is the money for it. You see a woman. And I'm like, God, what is happening here? <laughs> what is happening here? And one thing that happened between her and myself is, um, today she might call me and say she doesn't have money. And I will tell her that in two days time money will come and suddenly money will come big. And she loves her kids and her grandkids. And she will call them and tell them she has money and all of them will come and take it away from her. <laughs> and I'm teaching her how to love herself and how to keep money back for herself, things like that. So so what I'm what I'm saying to my sister who just hey this um it's beautiful that you've been able to have the courage to share with us tonight. But I want to tell you that I am part of this journey with you. And you know it with you and your mother and your brothers and your sisters. And you know it. You've been the woman who just talked to us, who just shared her experience. People are going to listen to what I'm telling you. She's a very wealthy woman. When I say she's wealthy, she's wealthy. 
You are not talking about a car or two cars. We're talking of many. You are not talking of one house, many. She's so blessed. But yet there is a lack in this area. And that has caused her a lot of pain and trauma. She does not talk easily. So for her to even talk about it, you can imagine how deep it is. Piling up over the years. The Lord has spoken that he has anointed me for happiness, to bring you happiness. Is there anybody who can encourage this woman outside me tonight? Anybody, any other woman? Please, if you keep quiet, it means you are not a saint. You are not faithful. If you just come to receive and go away, and you don't want to tell people your experience, because you don't know. Tonight, somebody might die because they didn't hear your story. They didn't hear your question. They didn't hear your experience in life. That's what is going to keep somebody alive. It's not all these sermons and teachings and preaching. It is our ability to share our life's problems. Share the story with one another. Pray for one another. That's what is going to keep us alive. That's what is going to make us rich. That's what is going to prosper us. So I want a woman or a man out there in the world, anywhere you are in the world, and you are connected with this, with this, um, with the Chapel of Science and Wonders, with the Dikai Mary Ministry, on Ustream, please, or on the telephone conference line, can you call in and offer your own story, a question, or a comfort or encouragement to this woman? Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is so touching. Yes. Is there somebody else that want to reach out to her? This is so wonderful. Yes, go ahead.
Wow. That's Amen. 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 That's all we can say. That is so deep. That is so touching. That is so deep. I have not trained this woman, the last woman who has just spoken. I have not trained her in vain. If that is all the reason I came to it was to take this woman to be, to think, to act the way she is today, then I've done my job. Thank you, Lady L. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Oklahoma has produced a great girl in you. I am so touched. I am so touched by you. Is there somebody too that want to offer consolation, encouragement to that? Or is there somebody that has a story to share with us about the pain and trauma of a middle life crisis that you went through? Please, we are, or you have a question, or you have a story experience to share with us that will bring healing to you, that will also expose us to really see things better. Please tell us. Anybody from anywhere in the world, you can call in 712-432-1212. The code is 648-355. Eight seven eight and the pound sign. You can call into the conference and ask question, offer a word of encouragement, exhortation, empowerment. Activate somebody's life. God has given you the gift to activate someone who is or who has gone through or is going through a middle life crisis tonight. Save somebody's life by sharing your story by offering prayers and encouragement or asking questions relevant to the topic we are handling tonight, which is the pain and trauma of a middle life crisis. Please ask your question. I'm waiting. Hey, come, can you hear me? Ah, here come the big kahuna. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. By the way, by by the way, let me. Okay, now listen to me before listen to me before you go on, Miss M, uh, Queen Queen of the East Coast. Listen to me. I want to send my condolence to you um, for um, your companion that went back, that passed on. Uh, this lady that is about to speak uh, right now and share experience had a, a very wonderful dog that has been a companion to her for a long time and the dog passed away. For most of you, having having a cat, a dog or a horse or some pets doesn't really mean much. But for some of us who understand, who understand the depth of mystery regarding animals and human beings is deeper than is deeper than that so we send up comfort to you tonight now you can continue yeah now you can continue miss m
Good. Could you send me the? Could you also make a big banner for me, like you you made, you made the, um, you made something about the Holy Ghost that is on the, in the, in the personal altar there. Um, you are good. You are the artist that knows how to draw and paint and do all those stuff. Um, I am so pleased with you for your your um, passion for life. That's how I'll put it. She has a great passion for life, great admiration um, for the impossible, the impossible life made possible by activating what Jesus has done for humanity. Um, through his life, death, resurrection. <sighs> I am so touched by your very vivid and uh, very deep understanding of what your fellow women are going through. Thank you very, very much. Now, is there somebody else that has a story? And by the way, I want to tell you... Uh, Queen of the East Coast, I want to tell you that um, I want you to know that um, we truly, we, we love you, we care about you. And uh, the lady that spoke um, um, uh, last about all these men that disappoint her, uh, I call her Queen of the South. I want you to know how much we love and we care about you. All of you that have spoken tonight, we really care about you, we love you, and we believe. And we know that um, the Bible is a book for champions. Those, those who believe you could be born poor, but that doesn't mean that you're going to live poor. <laughs> um, the Bible is a book for those who aspire to greatness. Now, let's go to somebody else who has a story to offer uh, or um, encouragement or empowerment or a story about a crisis that you've experienced in your middle age. Like, like Miss Anne talk about her eyesight an attack from left, right, and center. In fact, she didn't even tell you, even family members. Even family members. I'm serious. <sighs> and she's still standing. That's what is important. She's still standing. So, um, next person who want to share your story with us. Yeah. The number here is 712-432-1212 and the code to join the conference is 648-355-878 and the pound sign. Please call in to share your story, to ask questions or to offer encouragement, empower and activate somebody's life. Seems like um, there's no call coming in. Now let me continue to share this with you that um, a trauma or a, uh, and the pain of a middle life crisis can make you to sway that you want to end it all. A reason is because it creates two things. A state of helplessness and a state of hopelessness. You see, everything you're used to, you, you're used to winning. You're used to winning all the time. Okay. Um, everything that you've known that has been working for you, you've tried it. 
and at your middle age it's all like began to fall apart and that has started causing you so much pain and trauma could you imagine the pain and trauma of being depressed every day and ending up in a different bunch of medication antidepressants very very troublesome stuff inability to really sleep out of uh, a middle life crisis you will suffer so much mental and emotional turmoil it is worse with um, people who think that they are very strong that they are cowboys or cowgirls no bullet of life can touch them but when your mind began to be messed with by crisis of the middle age boy oh boy oh boy oh my goodness it's not something it's not a place for somebody to be because i have seen people who have so much pain especially the mental hurts and bruises the open wounds the gaping wounds the lacuna that we call it in law the lacuna that comes with such crisis has left people mentally insane and they ended up in neuropsychiatric wards of hospitals around the world frustrations the sense of loss can you imagine what it means the pain I worked as a, an assistant chaplain in a Lutheran nursing home once, excuse me, and um, it was so painful for me even to watch it. The crisis of middle age at the age of 50s, 60s, and you have to sell your car because of your eyesight, you can't drive no more. Uh, you can only read with it but you can drive and you can imagine what it is for you to sell your car for you to sell your beautiful wonderful mansion homes and move into a one bedroom in a nursing home or assisted living facility or retirement facility it's very painful very very it's very, that's why kids who really do not spend time to understand the emotional trauma, the crisis that they have, their parents are going through when they are being asked to go to a nursing home or assisted living facilities. I mean, I hope. Then you just have to auction off your thing, give your things away or sell them, and then move into this place. How long are you going to keep your things in, in storage? And then the emotional trauma of staying in a nursing home or assisted living facilities. And um, no, none of your kids or family members come to visit you. People of God, you know it was so horrible that one day I have to play, I have to play the role of a a late husband to a woman that was either dementia or Alzheimer. I have to dress up in suits and ties and uh, and uh, she really really believed that I was this is a this is a Caucasian lady and I am from Africa. She didn't care about my accent or my color. She really thought I was her husband. She was planting kisses all over me. And really was telling me some, uh, telling me some, reminding me of the good times that she and the husband had had together. 
very, very deep and affectionate conversation. And I left her flowers and so on. I mean, that was a role that I have to play. The next morning when she was asked what happened, the day before during lunch, when the husband came to visit her, she didn't remember much. I thought that is a wonderful line that you could leave yesterday and not remember what happened. <laughs> but do you know what pain that they have to go through? Those kind of individuals when they come to a sense of awareness of not having their mate that they have relied on and believe in all their lives. Someone that they adore. Someone that they kissed the ground where he put his feet or where she put her feet. You have no idea, but many of you do, who've been there. Yep. This is something really painful to watch. I watch as exciting as it was when I took a luggage of clothing and shoes of different shapes and sizes and went to a non-profit nursing home in New York and delivered to those men and women. I just watched as their eyes pop open from their head. They were shocked that somebody came and gave them gifts. But their children never did anything. The children didn't care about them either. That's why we need good people on the earth to be able to make the kingdom of God come alive in people's life. So that people do not need to reach that place where with all the good things of life around them, they decide to throw it in and let go. I learned that lesson when I wasn't home and my father gave up and left. Because I was told that he was asking, how does the mortuary look like? And all these things happened when I wasn't home. I was back out there taking entrances to going to college. And so my brothers and my sisters did not really understand spiritual things. And they didn't know that he was he was seeking a way out to go home. I would have told him not to. And he would have listened to me. And here am I, what I could have done to my father to save his life. I'm sharing with you tonight. I'm sharing with you. Don't throw, don't throw it in. Don't try to do anything. Happiness is coming your way. And happiness has come your way in Christ Jesus tonight. God will find the right way to bring you the happiness you need. And He will do it certainly. Is there somebody, um, is there somebody who has a story, a crisis story to share with us at middle age? The phone number is 712-432-1212 and the code to participate is, is um, 648355 Is there somebody to offer encouragement and prayers? I will also want to add something here. There is also the pain and trauma that those in the military have to pass through. If you, if you have a brother or sister who passed away or who lost a limb, leg, sight, body parts, and cannot really function, and now they are in their middle age, it has led to divorce and so on. Can you share that story with us? Will you be kind enough to share that story with the world? You can email me thekaimary2000 at gmail.com Email me your story and if you want us to plant that story on our website, we'll find a way to do it. Is there anybody who want to share the story of the military? Because oh, that's a very tough one. Police officers, fire service um, officers, um, 
people with the military, airplane pilots. Some of these jobs are very hazardous jobs. They are very, they are high stress jobs. And also medical doctors, people in the medical field, social workers, medical doctors, physicians, surgeons, Licensed practicing, uh, practicing nurses, registered nurses. Those are really high stress kind of skills. People that work in the nursing home, and the many a times they are the divorce rate is high, and uh, we just think, oh, these are bad people. They don't know how to raise a family. That's why all this is happening to them. That's not true. Life do happen to people even good people. Certain bad things will happen. Don't ask me how, I don't know. It's not always that people make wrong choices. Sometimes you don't make them, there are people who are waiting to make it for you. Is there anybody that want to share most of tonight? Um, if not, we will call it a quick tonight. Tomorrow night is when I'll be uh, sharing very, very deep issues. I will share with the world what God told me about middle life crisis. How he uses it to re-logistically, re strategically reshape human history. I will be sharing all that with you all tomorrow. So there is there is a good side to the seed in the ground. It will come up and the flower will bloom. In case I've missed anyone, is there somebody that is calling in to share or we will call it a night um, today? And tomorrow, I'll be doing deliverance. After the um, after we finish sharing, I'll be praying for people who want to be prayed for. Please bring your family members to join you tomorrow and listen to this important important conversation and discussion that is going to happen tomorrow. It's going to be big. It will change your life. It will definitely change your life. Don't think. Don't think that the cross is the end of it. Don't think that burial is the end of it. I don't believe in death. I do not believe in death. I don't I believe in life. So tomorrow I'm going to share with you why God permits middle life crisis. Why God put up with it and why he uses it. It's not about Satan. I will never give any credit to that son of darkness. Never. I won't give him no credit, not even one. So I will see you all tomorrow. This is Idikai Mary, your host, saying to you, I care about you. I love you. And all these people with me, they love, they care about you. Make sure you go to our website, www.ibikaimeriministry.com. Go to the, go on the right hand side and you will see the different pages. Click on latest news and events and you will see the dates and days for the meeting till the first week of June. It's all there for you. And, um, in the next one or two days, for those of you who have iTunes, those of you who have iTunes, I go to your podcasts and then type in my name, Idika A. E. Mary. Just type it in. And um, and the Chapel of Chapel of Science and Wonders, you will begin to see um, our videos will begin to appear. You can download it and watch it. You can now carry it with you on your 
on your iPad. Very gonna be easy for you. You can watch it there. And we are also appealing to you. As God bless you, remember to pay your tithes, to send your tithes to our ministry so that we can keep this beautiful program going on. Um, remember to send your offering so that we can do a lot more. We want to buy bigger storage place to host our podcasting. I decided that this year would never pass without me doing what the Holy Spirit said, go start podcasting. And I know Amen. right I know right now he's telling me through so many people, start putting your work on CDs, DVDs, books. So that's gonna be a different not a different ballgame. So we're gonna go with it because the gospel must come to people in diverse format. If you know of any website that you think that we should put our videos and teaching our writing into, please let me know. And there we will go there and plant our presence. Don't just keep quiet and tell God that people will do it. No. I want to plead with you to help us run our orphanages and to support struggling pastors out there. God bless you. And remember that with God, all things are possible and nothing yes. and nothing is impossible. Good night. Yes. I will see you tomorrow, Saturday, at the same time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. You're welcome. I love you. Love you too. Love you. I know he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good night. Good night.